hope. Reference scripture, read 1 Peter 3, 8 through 17. Most Christians find it hard to talk about their faith. One reason perhaps is this. Our faith is not really part of our daily life. The Apostle Peter sums up our commitment to Christ in one word, hope. Hope is the vision that whatever happens, Christ is in control. Hope goes very deep. It is in the marrow of our bones. Now, what do you do with this hope? You give the reason for it. That's what Peter says. Easier said than done, Peter wrote to the Christians who were hated in the community because of their faith. That faith excluded emperor worship and the Roman way of life. Christians were dragged before judges who demanded an account of their loyalties. That was the situation Peter was talking about. And he tells these Christians to answer the judges' questions with a full account of their hope. Now that took a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage today. Only when your whole life is bound to Jesus Christ by hope can you do it. It means that your own life must be placed on a new Christian footing. Now that would be the best thing that ever happened to you. A heart full of hope would be better than a safe full of gold. You would be an inspiring person. You would be drawn to people and you wouldn't find it hard to be drawn into a conversation with them. May our prayers be, Lord, fill us with hope and remove barriers from among us. Bless the account we will give of our hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yet there is one ray of hope. I still dare hope. The reason I can still find hope is the eternal's love is lasting and will never fail. The unfailing love of the Lord never ends. The favors of Yahweh are not past. His kindnesses are not exhausted. In my mind, I keep returning to something that gives me hope. I call this to mind as my reason to hope, to read my reason to have hope. I have hope and expectation that the Lord's mercy never ends. It is only the Lord's mercies that have kept us from complete destruction. We are not consumed because of His compassion. The Lord can always be trusted to show great mercy and tender compassion. Great is his faithfulness. Abundant is his stability. His loving kindness begins afresh each day. His mercies fail not and have no limit. They are new every morning. Hope comes with the dawn. My soul claims the Lord as my inheritance. My heart whispers, the Lord is my portion. I will trust him, yet I will expectantly wait and hope in him. The Lord is wonderfully good to those who hopefully and expectantly wait for him. To those who seek him, those who inquire of him and require him by right of necessity and on the authority of his word. It is a good thing to hope for help from God, to wait patiently till rescue comes from the Lord. It is good both to hope and wait quietly for the salvation, the safety and the ease of the Lord. The saving help of our Savior will save us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Deep in my heart I say to myself, the Lord is all I need. I can depend on Him. I will hope in the Lord. Read Lamentations 3, 
21 through 26. Then you will know with understanding based on the it based on and grounded in personal experience that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will never be disappointed. Those who wait far, look far, and expect me will not be sorry. Read Isaiah 49:23. The Lord delights in those who reverently worship him and those who put their hope in his unfailing love. The Lord is pleased with those who respect him. The Lord loves those who trust in his love. The Lord takes pleasure in those who wait for his grace and loving kindness. The Lord values those who fear him. The Lord is faithful to those who depend on his faithful care his mercy and his steadfast love. Read Psalms 147.11 Whatever was written in the scriptures in former days was whatever is written in the scriptures in former days was written for our instruction that by our steadfast and patient endurance we wait for God's promises. We might draw encouragement, comfort, and counsel from the scriptures too. We can have and hold fast to the scriptures and cherish hope because of all of God's promises in the scriptures. Read Romans 15, 4. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why so few of heavenness? Why so filled with heaviness? and misery. Why is my inner self so disquieted, despairing, despondent, and discouraged within me? Why all these sighs and all these groans? Why am I so upset? Put your hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him and give Him thanks. I wait expectantly for His saving presence, my Savior, my salvation, my Deliverer, my help, my hope, and my God. Read Psalm 42, 5. I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait, and in his word I do hope. I am trusting in the Lord. My whole being is confident and hopes in the Lord. I have faith in his promise. I expectantly wait. I wait for the Lord to help me. I look to the Lord, and in Him I do hope. I am waiting for you, Lord. I am counting on you. I trust in your promises, in your word. I have hope. Read Psalm 135. We expect the blessed fulfillment of our certain hope. We are awaiting and looking for the happy fulfillment, the realization of our blessed hope. Even the glorious splendor of the appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, our Deliverer, the Anointed One, who is the fulfillment of all of our hopes. Read Titus 2.13. The Lord who inspires all our hope is the source of hope, the giver of hope, and the fountain of hope. May the God of hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound and be overflowing, bubbling over with hope. May your whole life and outlook be rich and radiant with hope. Read Romans 15:13. Hopes, reference scripture, 2 Peter 3, 8 through 18. I sure hope she feels better soon. I hope to make it out there tomorrow. I hope my children love the Lord. I hope to stay healthy this winter. 
lots and lots of hopes. Some come true, others don't. Some are vitally important, others are trivial. What would life be without hopes and dreams? We need hope to live. We need hope to survive. We need hope to keep going, to find healing from failures, hurts, and sins of the past, to face new mornings, to face uncertain futures. Lord, will you help me today to abandon false hopes in which I have too long trusted? Money, a bigger home, knowledge, myself, friends, hoping against hope that they are someone or something else will provide me with meaning, purpose, and happiness. Will you give me the power to hear your promise that a bright new world is coming, a world where righteousness lives, where love reigns, where peace and justice rules, and knowing that my future hopes and dreams are safe with you, I can live with contentment and joy. Lord, of my past, my present, and my future, I pray this in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord. Hope, my beloved, rest, and again I say rest in the beautiful Sabbath rest I have chosen for you. I plan for you to have a well-rounded life, a blessed life, chosen and well-planned by me, full of surprises and delights along the way. I will continually surprise you with my love. You will exclaim with delight and sheer joy for me as you open each new gift. You will say, for me, you truly will lack in no good thing. I will bless you first and then a multitude with my message of love, forgiveness, mercy, and hope. I will teach my bride to be full of hope. They will never be hopeless as they come to know deeply that with me all things are possible. There's nothing too hard for me. They will have hope in the here and now and hope in the future. No situation, no condition, no possibility will leave them without hope. In my love for my bride, I will pour out a double portion of hope, a special measure of hope, blessed hope in the blessed hope. 